Someone on Twitter has asked which books to read after the mom test to continue learning. Uh, and I wanted to suggest three. Boom, I'll talk through why I think each one is useful. Um, and they're kind of the mom test approach of humble learning and conversation, but applied to different domains. I'll start with kind of the one I've read most recently and that I'm most excited by, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss about negotiation. This is incredible. Like, what a book, what a book. I wish I had read this earlier in my career. Um, there's only a handful of books that after reading them, you're like, wow, I would have paid $10,000 for that book. And this is definitely one of them. I think everyone should read it. He talks about ideas like tactical empathy, about how you don't have to agree with the person you're negotiating with, but you do have to get inside their head, even if their worldview is horrific to you. Uh, and about how powerful the conversation or remaining friendly and asking questions is. Um, it's a great mix of examples. It totally changed the way I did sales, negotiations. Um, as I was reading it, I got into a little acquisition deal to buy someone's uh, product. And I felt like for the first time in my life with the book in hand, it was like, oh, wow, I know how to have this type of conversations. And I felt like it was allowing me to use the mom test skills in this whole different arena where I didn't realize they had applied. Uh, super great fun and such cool stories of his uh, negotiation stuff as well. The next one, uh, maybe a bit controversial, Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. Uh, this book is out of date, uh, well, in the sense that it was written in the 80s, uh, but it's still a great guide to sales. And the reason I suggest it over other more modern sales books uh, and all the modern approach to sales has sort of been bent, built on the Spin Selling Foundation. Uh, and so people have kind of added extra letters to his framework. The spin, I originally thought spin was like, oh, we're going to trick them. It's about how to spin a story to trick people into buying your stuff. But it's quite the opposite. Spin stands for uh, situation, problem, and implication needs. So the first three is if you understand the customer's situation, problems, and the implication of that problem, then you'll finally be able to tell them what they need. So the actual pitch is only a quarter of the process. The first three quarters are about learning and understanding. And the reason I recommend this book in particular uh, is for people who think that sales is sleazy or they think you have to be pushy or you have to be despicable to be an efficient salesperson. This book shatters all those myths. And the reason that people think pushy sales works is because all of the early sales research was done on high volume, low cost items, like cheap watches in a mall. And it turns out that if you're selling something cheap, being pushy does work because it's not worth people's time. It's not a repeat purchase. There's not an extended relationship. So you can abuse their trust uh, and you can get yourself your $10 profit from selling them a broken watch or whatever. Um, but with startups and with entrepreneurship, it's almost always a longer relationship. Either it's a subscription or it's a high, higher value purchase or it's a uh, partnership. And so those pushy tactics backfire. And in spin selling, uh, Rackham was the first with his firm back in the 80s is they started studying high price, like relationship driven sales. And they realized that all of what they thought at the time were the best practices totally don't work. And it's much better to go in humbly, to be totally respectful, to go in with a learning attitude. And this was the book that made me realize, oh, I don't have to be an asshole to be an effective salesperson. I can just go in and try to understand and help people. And that's actually optimal. Um, the last one, This is Marketing by Seth Godin. Um, I really liked it. Uh, it is not a practical book. It's more like a manifesto and mindset switch, uh, but it's really great. And what Seth does so well, um, I found it, it really changed my attitude toward marketing. He breaks apart the myth that marketing is just this thing that you put on the end of product development. And he, instead he draws a uh, thread through the whole process and sort of says that like, look, if the product isn't something people really care about, you're not gonna be able to market it effectively. Like he ties marketing into product design, into empathy, into customer development, and kind of redefines what marketing is to be the end result of an empathetic and humble uh, search to create value for your customers. And again, marketing is a place I've always had a bit of an emotional bugbear. I don't like doing it. I don't like telling people about my stuff or trying to get them to buy it. And it was a mind switcher for me because it's like, oh, wait, no, you only feel bad about marketing something if you don't know it, it really helps people. If you know it helps people and you know it's worth the money and you know they're going to be overjoyed when they find it, which is all stuff you do earlier in the process during your cust dev and your product development, uh, then the marketing is easy. Of course, you're going to tell people about it. And 
I really liked all three of them. Um, I found them all useful in different ways. Uh, spin selling is extremely practical, uh, but I'm recommending it more for the mindset switch. Um, never split the difference is extremely practical. You're going to be able to apply it right away. Uh, and this is marketing is more, uh, more mindset. Um, but they're all going to build, if you believe, if the mom test approach resonates with you, uh, these are a great way to extend that approach into other areas of your business. Um, I definitely got massive value and uh, hopefully you find them useful.